Shaitan wants that you go misguided far, far, far away. Just like he himself. He wants you to keep going and keep going and keep going. And not turn back. And he will, and inshallah, we'll see how he does that. How is he successful in messing people up and making sure they stay messed up? So his response to Allah when Allah tells, tells him to leave is, Amdibni ila yawmi yub'athun. Give me extra time. And it's not a lot of time. Nadhara would be to give a lot of time. Anzara would be to give not too much time. I'm not asking for too much time until the day when they are resurrected. Meaning, don't punish me right away. Just give me some ability from even now until the day they're resurrected. And in the mind of shaitan, that's not a long time. In the mind of shaitan, who's actually been in the company of Allah, been in the company of the angels, he actually understands that from the time that this conversation happens until judgment day is not a very long time. And actually what he spins to all of us is you got time. You got all the time in the world. You don't have to change right now. Ramadan's not for a few months. You're good. You know, so in your head and in my head, we feel like we've got very long. And even if death is near, then so what? The day of judgment, God knows when that's going to come. Innahum yarawnahu ba'idan, wanarahu qariba. They see it as very something very far away. How? Why do you have to worry about it right now? So that's one thing that we get from it. The other thing that's on a side note, it's not really part of what I want to give you in the khutbah, but on a side note, some people ask the question, and even recently I was asked, Shaitan, is someone Allah kicked out? Someone Allah rejected? And yet later on in the story you learn that he was able to whisper to Adam and our mother, who were still in heaven. So how is he able to whisper to them while he's kicked out of heaven, and they're still in heaven? And Possibly the answer to that is actually this ability Allah gave him. First of all, he stays at a distance. He's part of the meaning of his word. He stays at a distance. But Allah gave him the ability to have his whisper reach us anyway. And that's not so hard for us to imagine today. right? People are very far away from us and their voice reaches us by means that would in any other century of world history would be considered magic. I can see my mother from across the ocean. That's... In any other day and age, that would be called magic. Today it's just an iPhone. Or today it's just a video call. Right? It's just a Skype call. So, but the idea that he can reach from a distance and can whisper is an ability that Allah allowed him to have until the day of resurrection. So, أَنْظِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ And Allah immediately responded, قَالَ إِنَّكَ مِنَ الْمُنْظَرِينَ Fine, you are among those who've been given some time. I'll let you have some free space. From some free roam to operate within that, within that roam, within that space. The other thing here is why did he ask for time? He knows punishment is coming. And he's know, he knows it's not that far away. What's he hoping to gain? He knows for a fact he will not avoid Allah's punishment. He knows for a fact that he's been rejected. There is no success for him at the end of all of this. There is no saving himself. There is no asking for forgiveness. He's given up on all of those things. He's gone far away from all of those things. He's made up his mind. So what's he going to accomplish? In his mind, so long as I can prove to Allah that I'm not the only failure. I'm a failure, sure. But my success will be if I can prove that they're also a failure. Aha, see? You think I'm a loser? They're losers too. And I'll prove it to you. Just give me time. This is his success. In his head, that's a goal. And you know what? That's a goal like a virus that he infects other people with. There are some people in whose life the only thing is, I don't care if I accomplish or not, I just want to make sure this one doesn't accomplish. I just make sure this one doesn't get. This is exactly what happened later on in the surah, in the story of Habil and Qabil. They both offered a sacrifice, one sacrifice was accepted, and the other says, well, how was his accepted? I don't care if mine was accepted or not, I can't have him be successful. That bothers me, you know? Jealousy even between human beings. Jealousy between siblings, between loved ones, between spouses, between parents. I've even met children that have said to me, you know, I don't like my parents. Why don't you like my parents? Because they love each other so much, it bothers me. <laughs> really? That bothers you? Yeah, because I know I'm never going to have anything like that. that and it just makes me jealous. Whoa, that's heavy. I mean, it sounds weird and funny, but it's actually pretty heavy. That a person can actually feel that. Shaitan can make you want something, even if... You're not going to have it, I wish they didn't have it. So long as they're miserable, I just want to make sure they're miserable, then I'll be happy. There are some people who might just be, you know, they're okay so long, so long as they don't hear from you. But if they find out that you're happy, if they find out that you were smiling, it really bothers them. Like, why is, why, why is he happy? What, what just happened? 
I thought he disappeared. I thought she was miserable. And now I see this picture somewhere, or I see this video somewhere, or I see this, I heard from somewhere that they were happy. Huh? What is this? And then the thought of how did they get away with it? How are they smiling again? It just eats away at them. Like they can't get it out of their head. You know? This, I, this is from the devil himself. The devil can't see us succeed. And so he tells Allah, give me time and I'll prove my case. But then he, what he said, I re, it's, it, it, it's so loaded that it's not going to be done in one khutbah. His strategy that he, it's not even a secret. He didn't even hide what he's going to do and how he's going to do it. He actually laid it all out. And Allah laid it all out for us because part of guidance, part of knowing the road is knowing the dangers on the road. So know your enemy, right? So you can't just, Allah didn't just give us directions. Here's how you get to heaven. Well, here are all the obstacles on your way to heaven. Here's how, all the obstacles that will keep you from succeeding. And here's your enemy waiting for you. So he says to Allah, قَالَ فَبِمَا أَغْوَيْتَنِي And it is only because you made me turn the wrong way. This is what he says to Allah. It is only because you made me turn the wrong way. Who does he blame? Allah. This was your scheme. This was your plan. You knew it would bother me that Adam is made from dirt and you messed, because you're all knowing, you messed with me anyway and you made me sin. It's your fault, not my fault. You got me into this. You did this to me. You just don't like me. You have it out against me. You're the one who cursed me. You're the one who doesn't want me to be forgiven. And because you did this to me, I'm going to do this to these human beings that you love so much. So the first part of that is blaming Allah. And because his first, in his response, you know, you could see, first he refused to do sajda. That was a distance away from Allah. Then he took another step and he said, well, I'm better. He, another distance, a step away from Allah. That's an act of arrogance. But now he's taken a huge step away from Allah. When he says, no, not only am I not wrong, you're the one who's wrong. You're the one who did wrong to me. Now he's blaming Allah. He's taking even another step. Guess what he's going to do with humanity? He's going to come to each one of us, and first he's going to make us disobey Allah. Just, okay, and then we all disobey Allah at some point. We all, we're not perfect, we're going to make mistakes. But that's one thing. But then he's get, And then maybe one time you make a mistake, you feel bad, you ask Allah to forgive, you repent, you cry, you, guilt, you feel guilt inside you. That just makes you human, and that makes you like Adam alayhi salam. But he comes and makes you sin again, and makes you, or convinces you to sin again, convinces you to sin again. And the next time, he adds another worse step that takes you, a, it's way worse than the sin. A sin is bad, but something way worse is when you start justifying it. It's way worse when you start giving a logical explanation for why you sinned. Well, I was under a lot of pressure, or I did this, or I, I had this reason or that reason. You don't understand what I was going through, I was really upset at the time. You know, I have my reasons. When you start doing that, you're being like the devil. He's taking another step away. Taba'ada, shatana. Another step away from Allah. But the worst of it all is someone keeps going down a road of sin. And then when you say, why are you going down this road? You say, Allah wants it this way. You know, if Allah wanted, I would have been a better person. I don't, I don't even know why He hates me so much. God just doesn't like me. What has He done for me? And you find people that have now drowned themselves in sin... Now speaking about Allah in that way, exactly the step-by-step -step procedure shaitan took to take another step, another step, another step, before he's an infinite number of miles away from Allah. This is taba'ada. And all of this out of his rage. Fueled by the fuel of his, this vehicle is his rage. So he will want that for humanity.